Here we go. God dang, God dang, God dang, it, it, ding. Welcome to Mind Tune of Time Live every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. If you've noticed, I was a little under weather there for a few weeks. I feel like I'm pretty much back to normal now, 100%. So super excited for that. Uh, took a lot of rest here over the last two or three weeks. Still pulled off these calls. Uh, but uh, mindtuneuptimelive.com, you can register for the Zooms. A lot of the interaction happens in the chat on the Zooms. Um, and then uh, you can also join the Facebook group, which mainly right there, I use that to stream um, into the Facebook group while these are live. And then that's where the instant replay is available after the call. And then essentially by usually end of day Thursday, I've got this on podcast uh, and I've got it on uh, YouTube under, you know, on YouTube, you can find it, Michael Gavin, Mind Tune Up Time, or you can search Mind Tune Up Time, Michael Gavin on podcast platforms and you'll find it. And then underneath, uh, on the Facebook after the fact on Thursday and on the YouTube and everywhere else, there's a show notes with timestamps of where I started coaching people, if I coach people in that particular session and uh, what topics were kind of covered. And so um, that's super helpful for people to check out. And you can also go to the mymechanic.net, find out what I got going on with coaching and everything. And um, that's that. So I appreciate everyone who shows up here every week, even the super troopers that show up in the holiday season, you know, there's definitely been a little bit of a drop off, you know, the last couple of weeks. Uh, but, uh, there's some of you, you just don't miss. You just don't miss. You're always here. Appreciate it. So that being said, my hat, Ted Lasso, believe, um, I don't know how many of you, I used to be around the time that this actually happened. Um, but I'm not so much into sports for the most part anymore. Sometimes do some family things on the weekends and I might watch the football game or something, but by and large, I'm not like super passionate or anything. Um, uh, but I'm from the St. Louis area and I don't know how many of you are into football at all or know this story, um, or have gone and seen the movie yet, but there's a movie called the American underdog. And uh, it features basically uh, Kurt Warner. And Kurt Warner is most notably known for the St. Louis Rams. And so uh, I went with my family yesterday, my, my mom and my dad, to go see this movie. And um, again, if you don't want any spoilers from Ted Lasso or from this movie, probably just turn it off because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be sharing some kind of pseudo spoilers unless you already know the story without seeing the movie um, or know the story without seeing the show um, but essentially there's your warning but the american underdog and there were some things that i did not know um you know about kurt warner because you know i was more into football back in 1990s you know early 2000s and then kind of got out of high school and just i don't know got more into business i guess um but um you know, he was into football from a very, very, very young age and um, and always dreamed of, of being in the NFL. And ultimately, um, he didn't get drafted. I mean, a number of things just was working against him, and uh, he ended up in arena football. And I didn't know this about arena football, but it is super fast-paced. Normal football field's 100 yards. Arena football is only 50 yards. And it is just 10 times the speed, 100 times the speed of, of normal football. Normal football can move pretty fast overall. Um, but he ended up doing that. And what was interesting right before that, though, and he was working at a hy Now, I don't know where you are from where I'm at. Just schnooks. I think he was uh, Ohio. Um, you know, there was a hy and he was putting stuff on the shelves. You know, he was a, uh, what do you, what do you call that person? Uh, stalker. He was stocking the shelves and five years later past what would be considered the prime. Most people are uh, drafted. Most people play college ball. He uh, never even made it into the college football. Well, no, he, he was playing college, but it was like the lowest tier. I'm not really well versed on all that, but the bottom line is, Everything under normal circumstances was working against him to ever end up in the NFL. He actually got drafted and got one day at like training camp for the the, uh, the Packers. And then that was it. And then after that, nobody else wanted him. Nobody else did anything. And he, he almost gave up, but didn't. And then he ended up um, essentially um, um, playing in this um, arena football. 
and he didn't want to do it because he's like, it's not football, blah, 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 blah. And he threw his first touchdown and he got a hundred dollars. And he goes, do I get paid every time I throw a touchdown? He goes, did you read your contract? The guy says you get paid for every touchdown every time you win. And he started getting like, you know, throwing eight touchdown passes. I guess these are really high scoring games in the arena football. Um, but just five years, within five years and past his prime, past all these things. Now, one could say this is one of those kind of unicorn, um, you know, essentially – uh, stories under underdog, of course, stories. And it's really rare. I mean, suppose there's like a million people that play football every year across all the board. And then there's like 5% of them that ever make it to college. And there's only 1% of them that make it to uh, the NFL. And then there's only like 1% of that 1% that will ever make it to a Super Bowl. And so from stock and shelves to five years later, he wins a Super Bowl. And uh, within two years, well, he, he, he was on the team for three years. The first year, um, he, uh, I think, played one game. And the only reason he got to play is because the, the main quarterback got hurt. And then he got his chance, which he kept saying, I mean, if I just get that chance, if I just get that chance, if I just get that chance, but he never gave up. And he did what is on my hat for any of those watching. He never stopped believing. At times there was doubts. At times there was, of course, like, what am I doing? This is stupid. It's never going to work out. But he had this drive. He had this conviction. He had this intensity and this belief inside of him. And, um, and you know, so within five years of stocking shelves at a grocery store to win in a Super Bowl, I mean, it's just, it's absolutely what most would say, unbelievable. Um, but I think what's interesting of a person who I've become very good friends with, a guy named Lewis Howes, um, who runs something called the School of Greatness. I think he's had 70 million downloads on the podcast at this point in time. It's been around almost 10 years, I think. Um, he was playing arena football, actually. And he got hurt. And he couldn't play anymore. And I think that that's what's fascinating is sometimes, you know, you have – because how many people – and this is the thing I think that happens – now, how many people had the same dream as Kurt Warner? And they didn't get hurt. But on certain levels, you could say, well, maybe they didn't give up. But my question is, how many do? Now, how many maybe don't have the talent, right? No matter how hard they work, they never or get good enough at that particular thing. But what I found more times than not is the people really lack the drive and the tenacity to almost give up anything to achieve their dream because some things I believe are easier and some things are harder and some things are near impossible, right? The odds are just stacked against you. Um, and then sometimes there's things that happen like for Lewis house where he gets hurt and he just can't do it. Like there's just no way. I mean, some people overcome those odds. It's like, are you told you're never going to walk again? You're told this, you're told that, which Kurt Warner, the lady he ended up with had two kids and one was blind. And like the kid, you know, was dropped on his head as a child by his dad. And, you know, I guess they were separated. And, you know, the guy was told the kid, the, the mom was told he'll never walk again. He's never going to see again. He's never going to this again, that again. And he's lived ultimately fruitful life. And I get emotional thinking about it because this kid had so much joy in the movie. And, uh, he was, he was ultimately blind, uh, but he was defying all odds, just like Kurt did, but Kurt never gave up and he always kept believing. And I think that so many people, and this is a theme that I have on some of these calls is that no matter how long it may take, um, have you given up on your dream? Because some dreams, I mean, you look at the story, two-thirds of the movie was the buildup. Once he hit the Rams, I think the movie was over in like 20 minutes. I think the movie was almost probably two hours long. And yet the buildup, the struggle, like I think people see things and they see people when, oh my God, Kurt Warner, this is a crazy story. He's, he's, he's working at a grocery store five years earlier and then he went to the Super Bowl, you know, and and there's this mismanagement of expectations of, of what it takes, what people like that go through to end up ever achieving something like that. And now not everybody, you know, I think I saw this post the other day. If you want to make a couple thousand dollars a month versus not about that you want or need to make a hundred thousand dollars a month. I don't think that by default, by and large, like 
90% of the places you could live in the United States of America, I can't explain everywhere else, but just the United States, 90% of the places that you could live, you could be living pretty decently it probably anywhere from four to eight thousand dollars a month. Like you, you don't need to make more than that. Now you could, um, um, you know, uh, it's not about. I think there's too much lack and shaming around people. If like you're you're content, like if you're living the Mexican fisherman story that I've talked about, where this guy is living the life that he loves taking care of his family and, a, and, a, and an American businessman comes along and sees the potential, sees what he could do. And you could do this and you could do this and you could do this. And if you do this and you build this up and you build that up and you do this and the guy keeps going, then what, then what, then what? And it's like 40 years later, it's like, well, then you'll IPO and you'll sell this fishing company, blah, blah, blah. And then he's like, well, then what? And then he just, you know, metaphorically speaking, he basically just describes out the same scenario the guy's in today. Right. And there'll always be people. Well, yeah, but what happens if he has this happen to his family? He doesn't have the money. What I find is most people who care will always figure it out. They'll always overall find a way to take care of their family and pay their bills. It's whatever they're willing, really, quite frankly, to tolerate at times. Because, yes, Dale's here saying thirteen hundred bucks a month. He makes it work. I remember a time when I lived in my parents basement for the first year or so of my business. And, you know. By and large, I didn't need more than about $500 to $1,000 a month. You know what I mean? I didn't have any debt. I didn't have any responsibilities. I My rent for my building, that for my business was like 500 bucks a month. But outside of that, I didn't have much food. I mean, gas in my car, like there wasn't a lot. And so, and I had some of my most fun and you hear that a lot with people. And I think it's because by and large, one's, responsibility gets so large that at times they don't love what they do, but there's so much. I know that's what happened to me on certain levels. The company that I built, I fell out of love with and fell in love with doing a version of what I'm doing today on this call and doing it in various forms. But I had so much, so many bills that, you know, depending on who you are, and what you're trying to do. I mean, you can go work at McDonald's and probably make 1500 bucks a month right? Like, yeah, you might be working full time there and whatever. I mean, I don't even know what the exact things are, but I know that making 15 to $30,000 a year, there are, I mean, from what I can see too, at least talking to certain people, I mean, depending on who you're talking to, there's no jobs. And then other people, there's like bazillions of jobs available. It's just whether or not you're willing to work it, right? You hear all these restaurants that can't find people to want to work. Like there's, there's opportunity out there. Now, are they 60, 80, 200,000, $500,000 a year opportunities that are in abundance? No, there are special skill sets. There's drive. There's a whole slew of things. If you're going to generate north of $100,000 a year in your life, right? But to generate 15 to $25,000 a year, it might not be doing something that you really, really want to do. But by God, there is opportunity out there that's in the fifteen to twenty thousand dollar you know a year range, and so you sit here and you look and you go, "What are you willing to do to get what you want?" I think he even said in the movie, you know, there's that idea that sometimes, you know, it is what it is. You got to do what you got to do so that you can get to do what you want to do. You know, and I think that all of us have to realize we can always make a choice. You're never really stuck anywhere. There's just always consequences with the choices that we make. And some people don't want to live with those consequences. For example, for me, I lived with consequences of decimating my credit score for a little while. I'm not ashamed to say it. I think these are things that I used to hide. I used to not talk about. And then the sharing of it gave me relief because I'm not hiding from anything anymore. And I think that there's other people then who can relate, who can go, oh, okay, well, he did that. He's not living with shame and guilt and, and all these things. And, and for a while I did. And it was the hiding of it where I was, I was shaming myself and guilting myself. But this aspect of like, you know, what I was doing wasn't working. And so I could have kept doing that. I, I mean, I could have kept maintaining, you know, paying all the bills and being like, ah, I'll just keep, I don't want to, I don't want to, 
I don't want to not pay the things. I, you know, I'm this outstanding person and I, you know, I'm not going to miss payments and I don't want to hurt my credit score. And I'll, but yet I did. I hear it. I honestly, in the big picture, felt more relief than I felt anything else. Uh, it, it wasn't something I was like, oh man, I don't want to let people know. I feel so bad. I, my credit score went way down and all. I didn't care. And so everything, when people have jobs that they hate, but they're like, well, I got bills and family and kids. You do. You absolutely do. That's fine. And you can either know that you can get out and it might take you one year, three years, five years, 10 years, six months, three months, like that you're like, I chose to get married. I chose to have kids. And even though I don't love this, I got to just stick it through right now. Some people do the stick it through and they're like resentful of everybody and everything. And they become very bitter and they stick with this thing for the family, right? Then there's other people, they're doing something they love, but they're doing it for the family and they're never home and they're never available. Right. And, and, and the kids could have been happy living in a bus and they'd be super pumped because they get to be with their dad all the time. I mean, there's certain ages, right? But there's so many variables, but there always is a consequence, but nobody's stuck at a job. You can quit. There's just consequences. Are you single? Are you married? Do you have five kids? Like how much debt do you have? And if, even if you have debt, are you willing to not pay the bills for a little bit? And you know, on certain levels, what I've at least seen, I'm, this is not legal advice. The legal department saying, hey, watch what you say. But like the reality is like you cannot pay most debt for months on end. And outside of yes, a credit score and you wouldn't be able to go purchase a house or get more debt easily. You're not going to go to jail. Nothing bad inherently is going to happen to you, right? You just got to live with the consequence of that. And what I've seen with myself and others, the credit score could shoot back up. You start paying your bills again, right? But then I'm in a, in, a, in a mode where ultimately my second half of my life, I just plan on paying. I mean, right now, I still have some debt and different things, but by and large, I do pay for everything with cash. So when I buy something now, right? I don't throw everything. I used to throw everything on a credit card. Now, by and large, when it's paid for, it's gone. Because what happened is throwing $5,000 on a credit card, I only owed, you know, back in the early part of my life, you know, when I started doing it, it's like, oh, 50 bucks a month. Okay. I get this, I get this camera I need for my company. $5,000 camera. It's only going to cost me 50 bucks a month, right? And so, the thing is, I did that over and 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 over again, right? Nobody usually starts out 500 pounds or 300 pounds, right? But by and large, by default, the more you don't eat well, don't exercise and don't do anything week after week, month after month, year after year, pound after pound, pound after pound, it adds up, right? So nothing is typically a problem in the instant, but in the constant, you're going to create what could be a problem. But the same thing that creates problems in the same habits that you take on to build up all the debt, to build up all the weight, to, to have all the problems, to have all these negative things, you can reverse and do similar patterns and habits that are going to get you out of that and are going to change that. But you keep, you know, you hear that, that thing, you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to keep getting what you get. And so what I've realized in my own life is at times, I got to shake things up. I got to change it up because if I just keep doing the same doggone thing, nothing's going to change. It's either going to maintain or it's going to get worse. It's usually all that happens by doing the same thing, by thinking the same way, acting the same way, being the same way, I'm going to get the same results or they're going to get worse. They typically don't get better. And it's by shaking it up, changing it up and doing something for me at times in the instant doing something extreme. That's what works for me, right? It's that, it's that kind of cold turkey thing, right? I'm not the person sometimes who dips in, dips my toe in. I just jump in, right? Um, and some of you may be dippers, <laughs> right? There's no right or wrong here, but not changing anything is still making a decision and doing something. And if you don't like what you're getting, you're likely just going to keep getting it. So I wanted to see something here. People are saying uh, something. Uh, Dale says, I'm watching Michael because I would like to start up something online to generate more income. There are things I could do to improve the world if I had more money to invest. So, 
you know, I say this, I get more bullish every single day about this. What do you like to do? You know, I think that what's over glamorized is entrepreneurship now. It was not even glamored back in um, when I started my company, you know, back in high school in like 2004, like internet wasn't well. I mean, I saw an article from 2000 that was like, this internet thing's going to die. Like people are not liking it. It's slow. It's not working super well. That was in 2000. I started my company ultimately 2004 through 2006, uh, my video production company. Internet wasn't what it is today, you know, the ability to market online, have an online business. I mean, by and large, there was a very few people. Like now, there's still not as many, I think, as people think, but there is an enormous amount more, right? Because all the technology for any industry, it's just like, I mean, there's people making millions with their phone. This phone for, I mean, it's still not cheap, but I think this one's like six to 800 bucks. But like this phone I have shoots better quality video than a god dang $3,000 camera that I had. It has more storage than my original computer's at, right? And so, like, there was not a lot of, entrepreneurship was a lot more expensive. And depending on how you view it, a lot more difficult. Now, ones could say, well, there's so much more competition. I mean, there's just, there's always excuses, I believe, that can be made. Um, but, um The, the, the reality of it is, is that entrepreneurship is more glamorized nowadays. And I think that it's, it makes a lot of, a lot of things out there being sold to people are money-making opportunities and they are skewing the expectations that one believes it's going to take to achieve something. And the problem that I have is that not that something isn't possible, but when you skew someone's expectations of what it takes to achieve it, then when it's not being achieved relative to one's expectations, they will quit. Because if you think that it's not going to be that difficult, and it's going to take you three to six months of some effort to do something. And if you just work a little bit and set this thing in place that you've bought, and just follow the steps that effectively you'll have this five or ten thousand dollar a month. It's going to give you passive income. You'll have that extra income to take care of your life and do all these things you want to do with the extra money. And the problem with that is, is that is the making five thousand dollars a month, ten thousand dollars a month, three thousand dollars a month, and having an online business and doing all these things are they achievable still today? The answer is a resounding one hundred percent yes. The technology, the accessibility, the courses, the programs, the mentors, the, the, the things available to someone to help them achieve these things uh, is in abundance and it's achievable. Uh, so that's not a lie. It's not like it's not true, but what the way they're marketed so that they can maximize the amount of people that will give them money skews and leaves out a lot of the details of what it will actually take and the time, the energy, and the effort that it will actually take to achieve something. And then the problem is, is that most people with that thing, they don't really want to do most of the things that it will take that they'll have to learn or they'll have to get excited about or they'll have to do the actions they'll have to take because a lot of that is left out until the money's received. Then when the money received, the 14,000 steps and 4 million hours of, of course material of things that you're going to have to, one, just watch through. That's not learning it, right? And most people don't learn anything that they're not passionate about. They don't have a love for. There's a video. Go to Michael Gebbin on Facebook, facebook.com slash Gebbs86. You search me. It's me and my wife. Let me see if I can get this to play for everybody here. There's a video that I shared from 2019, and let me pull it up here. That's so crazy. The irony of it is I never really worked for money. That yes. was the, the irony. That's so I, crazy. I've never worked for money neither. The funny thing is, yeah. for me, maybe it's been the same for you. I ended up playing a game that I liked and got good at 
and then they and they gave me money. If you're good at the game, they yeah. give you money. Exactly. Okay, that's what it is. That, I think that's a very, very important part of people that are successful. People don't realize that most people that are successful and you know earn a lot of money, they're really just doing their jobs extremely, extremely well. And that is a benefit of it. It just and, comes. And, Everybody talking so I, I, I love that. You know, you've got here, Warren Buffett says, it's not work. It's just another form of play. J.K. Rowling, I just write what amuses me. It's totally for myself. Alan Watts says, the essential principle of business, of occupation in the world is this. Figure out some way in which you get paid for playing. Oprah says, I never knew that being... Oprah says, I never knew that being my authentic self can make me rich. They find a game they love. They keep playing it because it's so much fun. And as a byproduct, they become so insanely good at it that people can't help but notice their excellence and reward them for or reward them with money. They all say some version of the same thing. Don't chase money. Find a game you love. Keep having fun and become great. Play for a living. And Charlie Hone, this is who posted this, is a, a guy who wrote a book called Play. And um, he was the assistant to, ten, uh, it's called Play for a Living. And, um, and uh, he was the assistant to Tim Ferriss when I um, wrote out, or when I reached out to him and, and he responded to me back in 2010 when I filmed for um, Tony, or for, for Tim Ferriss. Um, but it's just like, I see it everywhere, right? Uh, here, here's one. I've recently studied Jerry Seinfeld, and he is worth over $800 million and doesn't need to work ever again, yet he still does comedy shows the majority of weekends throughout the year because he loves it so much, and for him, it is play. And so some people play a game that has huge potential. Some people play a game, I would argue most people play a game that has more than enough potential in it to make them a really great living. And again, back to, well, what is a really great living? Well, that really depends because I think if most people, uh, most things that you could play um, could get you to the $10,000 a month. I really believe that a lot of things out there in the world that we live in today have the potential to get to that. That's $120,000 a year. Now, do I believe that everything out there has the potential to make $50 million a year or $10 million a year or even a million dollars a year? No, I really don't. And I think when you look at statistics, the amount of people who even break three or $400,000 a year is under two or 3% of the total population of existence that's out there, billions of people, right? Um, but the reality is if you have enough drive and tenacity and you and you're doing something that you do stuff in the interim whatever you got to do to stay alive to eat to have a house to somewhere to live like whatever you've got to do to survive and then you spend all your excess time learning how to become better and better at the thing that lights you up and then you can figure out what ways can you earn with this? But you will not do that. Building some random thing that if, if somebody gave you millions of dollars every day for the rest of your life, you never needed to make money, that you are working on something, you would drop in an instant, in an instant. If the thing you're doing today, you would do, if you would change in my humble opinion, probably more than 50 to 70% of your life would be changed in an instant. If you were given an infinite amount of money, you would change 50, 70, 80% of your life. Now, if you're like, eh, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd tweak some things, right? But I wouldn't change probably but 5, 10, maybe 20%, like that 80, 20 rule for me. Like you probably wouldn't change more than 10, 20%. Then that's one thing. But if you're like, I'd change almost everything, or I'd change the majority of things, or I'd change a lot of things, like you really got to look at why have you been struggling? Why have you bought this, that, and the other thing? And for a decade, for 15, 20 years, have you not made very much progress? 
right? Is it because you're not consistent with things? Is it because you really don't like what you're doing? So you're like busy and you're buying things, but you're really not taking a lot of action, right? Action is not buy, action is buying a course, but like what you learn from that course to earn from, there's a different set of actions that need to be taken. And so a lot of people are doing things, they're busy, they're buying things, they're learning things, they're thinking about things. But right now, as you go into 2022, I love it. Uh, there's a guy named um, Sean Cannell that I'm friends with. And I, I watched a little segment of something from him today. And he said with his team, he has IPAs every day. That they've got to submit in Slack. And how many of you know what IPAs are? Out of curiosity on this chat, how many of you know what I, I, IPA is? What is an IPA? Anybody know? IPA, anybody want to be funny with what an IPA is? All right, Tashina, of course, pops in. <laughs> no coincidence. Tashina, I should have said, uh, not, not, not to speak up, see what re responses we got here. But yeah, IPA, which nobody put in here yet, but is he joked? It's not a beer right? Uh, maybe it's more of a Midwest thing. I don't know, but IPAs, I'm not, I don't know, a drinker, but he goes, it's not beers. We're not drinking beers every day, right? Multiple times a day, but it's an income producing activity, right? And too many times we are working on things that by and large are unnecessary. They don't move the needle. I mean, most people, you don't even need a website. There's like very little you need to, depending on what you're wanting to do, but depending on how you set it up now, is certain ways going to get you again to really, really high levels of revenue, just being super disorganized and random and like, you know, not having anything? Maybe not. But you can do some things to move the needle in your business and make some money and make some, get some momentum that um, is not spending $5,000 on a website that you may not have money with, right? Or, or tweaking the colors on a business card or, or there's just so many little things that we can do that we can get stuck on the business name or something. Like there's a lot of things and I've done it. I know, I know, I know. I have done these things. I have spent tons of money and tons of time. But at the end of the day, I know that if I just get on the phone with, for me and what I'm doing with coaching, if I just get on the freaking phone with people, like, I, yeah, I can use Voxer. I got all these different random things. But if I just get on the phone with people and interact, I know I'll make money, right? Michael's making money when his mouth is moving. But like, even though I do this, I find that, yes, over time, there will be people who reach out and say, how can I work with you? I've been watching these calls or I can tell them the link and they'll go there. But like, I know by and large that if I go look at the names and sometimes I don't do it, I don't do it. But if I go look at the names of the people on this call and I go, okay, half these people have paid money for something with coaching with me and half of them haven't. And I just reach out to the people and interact. Like, will I get all those people to convert or do something or sign up with me or do whatever? Maybe not, but I bet you I have more faster than if I just sit back passively. And so I find that I, what works for me is being proactive rather than reactive, right? There's order takers, there's master chefs. We need order takers in this world. If you find yourself to appreciate, like, or uh, want to be more like, tell me what to do and I'll do it and I'll do it diligently. I'll be disciplined. I'll get it done and I'll do a good job. But I just want people to, to tell me what to do then you probably need to collaborate or, or sell yourself or get a job to somebody else who's just going to say, hey, do this, do that. Because if you're going to be an entrepreneur, if you are going to have your own business, then the passive, and I know, I mean, I, I'm into law of attraction things. I mean, there's a lot that I'm into and in, in, in finding paths of, of least resistance to do things. But that doesn't eliminate my desire to be doing in general and being what I want to be and do what I want to do. But that also involves being proactive for me, right? So you find when I talk about massive and perfect action, Tashina's put in there massive intentional action. It's like the third level, what I had, I used to just say massive and perfect action. Then I said inspired action, then intentional action. It's like, what are the actions that are income producing activities? And so this is a this, let's say a call like this, or a coach or a mentor, purchasing coaches, courses, mentors, listening to podcasts, buying into programs, 
Those are great activities. I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't believe that, that having coaches and having mentors or putting out content like this is valuable. Right? If I didn't think that this stuff helps people's lives, I wouldn't do it. But in and of itself, when you purchase these things, you still have to do other things to make money. And that's where I think that there's too much of the word passive thrown around. And when your expectation is calibrated to receive and be passive and not be proactive, then you sit around wondering why your business isn't taking off because this in and of itself helps you become smarter, wiser, get tips and tricks and all these different things, no matter whether it's me, whomever's out there. But until those chips and tricks and things are executed or taken action on, they're worthless. They really are. They're not worth anything, right? You spent money. You gained information that makes you more valuable in business, that can have you take actions that can shortcut something. But again, it still uh, is a matter of taking those actions, being proactive, not waiting around for somebody to call you, to email you to reach out to you, right? So those income producing activities, the producing part is gonna be through your actions, right? And not the actions that are just the learning. To me, it's 50%. If I don't learn anything, I don't have any mentors, I don't have anybody helping me, and I don't have any support, I don't learn anything, and I'm just taking random action, I believe in this day and age, that's just, uh, you know, on certain levels, it's just wasting time, right? Because there are people who can help you bypass some of the things that are like certain things you're just not going to be able to bypass, but other things you can. And on certain levels, it's just completely unnecessary to do certain things if there's somebody who can help shortcut that for you, right? Like for me, people who think something's going to take 10 years. Wouldn't you rat like not that there's still there will always be a journey, there'll always be some struggle, right? There'll always be some difficulties and challenges. But if you could get to what you wanted in a year, would you rather it take 10? If no matter what, there's things you might not like as much or struggle, would you rather that pain and hell on earth take a decade or take a year? Because even once you get to what you want, there'll still be things to maintain that. I mean, there's always, it's never just a passive sit back and stare at the wall. And a lot of people that I attract, I'm still not a super like bleed your eyes out, sleep when you're dead person, but I want to do what I love and I'll put a lot of time in doing it. But the reality is um, I've done a lot more of like, I've done the bleed your eyes out, sleep when you're dead. And I've done in the last three or four months more being fairly passive, like not doing as much and still maintaining my bills and all my things. And it's like, I have dialed in a lot of ways this create your life your way. And knowing that I believe, I really truly believe that anything is possible. And that even people who, when you judge a book by its cover, their cover might be like, yeah, probably don't have a lot of potential. And what I love about the Kurt Warner story, what I love about Ted Lasso, what I love about a good chunk of my coaching clients is that when you judge these books by their cover, you'd really think, mm, not much potential, probably not going to succeed. Likelihood, they'll fail. And yet they defy the odds. And I love that. Versus the person who's like, ah, most likely to succeed, right? That's great. Those people succeed. But I am really attracted to the underdog, to the person that everybody ignores, everybody thinks is crazy. Every, they've been told their whole life. This is what I have had people say to me that I do for them more than almost anything. And it's I believe in them when no one else does. And then I help them believe in themselves. Because when you don't believe in yourself, what actions will you take? If you don't believe in yourself and you don't believe in the potential of the thing you're working towards or that you could end up having that thing happen, if you really don't think it's possible, how much time, energy, and effort will you really put into making it happen? If you really don't believe it's possible for you.
right? And I love that, Norman, because that is my mission. My mission isn't strategy and tactics and tactical things that somebody's going to do. Here is exactly step-by-step step what you're going to do. Here's who you're going to call. Here's what you're going to say. Here's how you're going to say it. You're going to follow up five times. You're gonna, like, that's not me. My entire career and all the success stories I've had from people I've worked with, I have never done that. It's never been say this, do this, call this, this will happen, that'll happen, this will happen, three months later, this will happen, and this is going to happen. And like, it's not me. I think there's some things where there are some steps that can be taken. And there are some losing weight. I think there's strategy to that at times, right? And there's specifics that certain body types, certain types of metabolism, certain types of things like you can't eat this, but you can eat that. And this person can't eat this and they can do that. And this person's going to work out like this and they're not going to work out this amount of time and do these kind of, like, I think there's a lot there. But by and large, what Norman said there, your mission is spiritual to no end. May you be blessed to turn it back for this. I'm grateful for that. And what I've had to lean into and believe is that my ability to be a catalyst, be a jump starter, you know, uh, bring clarity to people, help them build their confidence, help them believe in themselves, that once those things are achieved, I find that the people I work with, that they move mountains. They know what needs to be done. They know who to call. They know what to say. They know what to do. And if by God they don't, they know where to find it or they will find it. Because when you get an insatiable belief, an undeniableness inside of you that says, I can do this, I will do this, I will do whatever it takes, and you're working towards something that in and of itself, though, that you enjoy. I'm sure there's bumps in the road, and there's complications, and there's difficulties, and there's challenges, but by and large, what you're working on is something that you believe in, that you like to do then it is only a matter of time. It is only a matter of time. Now, will you be the unicorn of unicorns that you know, win the Super Bowl or make millions or do these other things? I don't know. But can you make a living doing the thing that you love to do that lights you up? I absolutely believe that is possible for more or less everyone. There is so many things I see out there every day that, you know, really seem like miracles. And sometimes it's not a person dying for 15 minutes and then coming back to life and telling how they saw the other side or something. I'm not talking about miracles like that. I'm just talking about everyday people and everyday heroes whom nobody will ever know their name. Like by and large, you know, like an Oprah, right? Like, by and large, no one knows their name, but yet they make a great living, they make a great impact, they do what they love, and they inspire many. It doesn't mean they're using their voice to inspire. Maybe they're like Norman, they're using music to inspire. And Norman speaks as well, but by and large, his music is what inspires. And some people, it's their art. Some people, it's their writing. Some people, it is their speaking. Some people, it's the films they make, the movies they act in, the sports they play. But so many people have the ability to make an impact on this planet doing what they want to do. And if for some reason that thing, like you take Kurt, his dream was seen through to the end. From the little boy to winning the, the, the Super Bowl. And on certain levels, that was his dream. And there's so many other people like him that either give up or they get hurt and that dream dies that dream but that fuel the pain that's from that being taken in certain levels we'll just call it what it is that you're something happens you just can't do it maybe you know whatever you are past the age now right you got hurt whatever it is some things are age dependent other things are not there's plenty of things that are not but a lot of things in sports to some degree are to be a professional at something. But to get to those levels takes a level of discipline that most don't possess. But when I think of Lewis Howes who got hurt and could no longer play football, he still played some other sports, but he's ultimately channeled that into what he calls the school of greatness. And he still has made an enormous impact on this planet through his voice, through his interviews, through the people he's been able to connect with. And it hasn't been easy. 
but he stuck with it for a decade. But initially, when you don't, nobody knows your name, nobody knows who you are, nobody wants to be interviewed from you. So there's people that he had to do a thousand interviews before certain people would even take his call. There's certain people that were interviewed that those people knew somebody that got somebody that without that person, they wouldn't have got that person. Without that person, they wouldn't have got that person. But now doing it for a decade, look at what's possible. So don't look at where you're at today and think you're going to jump and do a thousand episodes in a day, a week, a month, a year. Maybe you can do a thousand episodes in a year, right? What would that take for something, right, to do that? But if you more look at what I've started to do and you look at things through the lens of a decade, and I think it's Tony Robbins, so many people overestimate what they can do in a year and they underestimate what they can do in a decade. What I've achieved in my life, I did not have big hopes, big dreams, big aspirations. This is what I'm going to do. I didn't have big vision boards. I didn't write down all these goals. I didn't write down a step-by-step -step and here's what I'm going to do. And year one's going to look like this. And year two's going to look like this. I just followed my curiosity. I kept following the path laid out in front of me. Now, yes, I am and can be because I'm very self-aware in a lot of ways. I can be a lot more intentional in my actions. But two-thirds of my success in business and in life professionally, I wasn't super intentional. I didn't know what I was doing. I just had a passion, and I had a drive, and I kept moving forward. It's kind of like in football. Probably a good place. We'll be wrapping up here soon if you get it. You know, that they kept telling him, you just got to keep moving forward. Right, don't go backwards. Don't get a first down, you can't keep moving forward. But you move past, you get the first down, you get another first down, you throw that touchdown pass. Right? You can get that, you can run in the end zone. And so it's about moving the needle. Now, there's another good gold cliche inch by inch, it's ascension, yard by yard, it's hard. Just take it step by step, inch by inch, needle move by needle move, crawl by crawl, move by move, step by step, day by day. Right? And as long as you don't quit or you don't entirely give up, you can make magic happen. It's not all woo-woo. It's not, there's, there's a lot of things that'll have to be taken and actions that'll have to be taken for your specific thing that you want to do. And yes, for some people, those dreams are a hundred times more uh, harder to achieve than others. So you have to ask yourself, are you willing to put in what it takes? Because for a lot of people, if you're not, getting a job may just be the best answer. You can just do whatever the hell you want on the side. Don't need to worry about making a dime with it. Don't need to worry about hiring, dele delegating, finding people, or learning all these different skill sets. You just do the thing you want, have fun with it, have a job that pays the bills, and you can have your house, have your food, have your clothes, and, and do your thing. And there's nothing inherently wrong with that. Don't let anybody shame you or guilt you. Because what you'll do on the opposite is, you be building a bunch of BS that you don't want to build and you don't want to do and you don't like, and you're likely even more miserable than if you just had a job that was okay and you enjoyed, and then you did your thing on the side. You don't worry about making any money, but you don't have to worry about money because you just show up, you do your job, you get paid, and you don't have to worry about anything else. The people in my world, the people coming to Michael Gavin, my, the mind mechanic, mind tune-up time, by and large, I have nothing against those people. I am not shaming you. I am not guilting you to doing anything else because I believe that you'll have the most joy and fun doing what you're willing to do. There's an album coming out by my man, Ben Rector. Three songs coming out next week. Let me play you his little trailer real quick that just came out because I love what, what is said in this uh, trailer. I love the little sound bites. We're going to wrap this up probably in the next few minutes today. Um, here we go. They say the older we get, the easier it is to become complacent. That the smart thing is to stay safe and unexposed. But the truth is, joy is found outside your comfort zone. 
This spring, Ben Rector, Snoop Dogg, Kenny G, Dave Collins, Taylor Goldsmith, Jim Henson's Creature Shop, the One Voice Children's Choir, and Joy himself will embark on the journey to discover the joy of music. Join them, and you just might find it yourself. Three songs out January 7th. Short film, album, and concert tour to follow. The joy is found outside your comfort zone. I genuinely can say that anytime I've become bored or haven't enjoyed myself, there has likely been something that I've had to do to push outside of what is just normal, that I'm content with and I'm good. It doesn't always mean it's has to be something horrible and difficult. It can sound so like, oh God, I got to get outside my comfort zone. That sounds horrible, right? I'd rather just be comfortable. But what I find is, is that pushing outside that comfort zone that helps you reach other levels of enjoyment, of fun. It's one of the biggest words I think I'm taking in actually into 2022 is fun. Having more and more fun. There's, there's things I know I can do to survive. And some of those things, which I'll get into later, I don't want to articulate it all right now to become a jumbled mess, but there's things I know that I can do that I can survive absolutely unequivocally. And I always will. I believe in myself, self-esteem's way up, confidence. Um, but some of those activities and some of those things, it's just kind of boring. It's not really fun. And so there's a, another path that I can take, that there are some things that are outside my comfort zone. But I know by and large, the payoff means tons more fun tons more enjoyment, tons more collaboration, tons more laughs, right? And uh, for me, tons more motivation. And that comes through a lot more connection and collaboration um, rather than being super, super solo. And um, so fun is super important for flow. And I know that I don't not like what I do in my life right now, but some of the things that I just had a dream last night, called my buddy up. And um, as I'm looking into 2022, um, fun is super important. Flow is super important. Surrounding myself with people I enjoy being with, collaborating with, connecting with um, is super important. I love my clients. I love the work I do with them. Uh, but there's another, and I love my personal life, but there's another little element um, that I'm looking into. And I'm really, really excited. But some of that involves things that the proof in my past could say, you're going to screw it up. It's not going to work. There's no reason to even do it, even though there's so many pros that can come out of it. And when you've done it, you had so much fun. And so that's where, at times, to achieve the impossible, you have to see the invisible, right? So what's invisible you have to give form to, right? Too many times they can't achieve what's impossible because they can't see the invisible. What's not there? What is there is that it builds responsibilities and kids and families and jobs they don't like and proof from the past that says, well, you've never got it to work before. You've never succeeded before. Your entrepreneurship things always failed. It never works out whenever you try to do that. Um, and you've got this cry wolf thing going on where those not only around you, but even yourself says, don't do it probably won't work. Why also? Because the proof from the past says it hasn't. But this right here on my hat, can you believe what most people believe in God? What do they have? Now, maybe some have said they've died, they've this, they've that, they've seen God, maybe they see God in everybody. But have you seen Jesus Christ? Or do you just have faith? I'm not here to get into religion and politics, but that word right there is so important. That when you cannot see it, that you believe it, and that you have faith that you can get through it, and that what you cannot see today can, in a sense, happen for you tomorrow. Tomorrow could be a week, a month, a year, two years, three years, five years. I don't know. 
all sorts of people have all sorts of things transform and change their life, all sorts of ages, all sorts of time, different times in their life for all sorts of different reasons. But hold on to the faith and believe that it's possible. Because when you do, when you have that, when you can anchor into that, the actions that you will take will be very, very different. Because when you don't have faith, when you don't believe, the actions you take will also be very, very different. What you think, what you speak, what you believe are very, very important. Because what you think about, you bring about. So be careful, as they say, what you wish for. But it's not a matter of the negative, be careful what you wish for, because what you wish for, what you want, can easily happen just as easily is what you don't want and what you don't like. And some of you have more of what you don't want and what you don't like right now. That's already going to happen by default. So you start changing what you're thinking about, you're speaking about, you're believing about, and then you'd be changing what you're bringing about. But things take time. My friends, rock and roll. It has been an honor. It has been a pleasure. Uh, and I am super excited for 2022. It's going to be a fun year. Um, all sorts of twists and turns. You know, in real life, I don't necessarily love roller coasters. Uh, but a metaphoric roller coaster I've learned to love. And that's the expectation I've calibrated to. Not that there's going to be these horrible problems and I need to expect, oh my God, and I think about all the problems that are going to happen, all the challenges and all the difficulties and all the horrible things. I don't think much about that at all. I just know that there's going to be some bumps. There's going to be some ups and downs and they're going to happen. And to the degree that they're actually bad things is all a matter of my interpretation. Because one person's bad thing is someone else's dream, is someone else's wish. At the peak of my video career, I was living what others dreamed about. But yet it wasn't my dream anymore. It wasn't my desire anymore. And so the thing that others wished they had, I wished I didn't. And so to the degree that the dip is so bad is only relative to your belief that it is. Because it doesn't have to be. Because some people go down in the dip on the roller coaster. Well, that's their favorite time. Some people don't even want to be on the roller coaster. Some are like, ah, I wish it just kept climbing. And then it went straight. And then it climbed some more and went straight. But it never had to go down. Right? But the down doesn't have to be bad. The down doesn't have to be negative. The down can just simply be a down. And you can throw your hands up and go, here we go. <laughs> right? I'm ready. So you're going to throw your hands up and be like, I'm ready. Rock and roll. You can throw your hands up and go, I give up, <laughs> right? That's up to you. And so it's been an honor. It's been a pleasure. Super pumped for 2022. I hope to see all of those who are on here in 2022. And I hope to see more of you. I hope some of you will share this with a friend, share the Facebook group for the streams, let them sneak in there and listen. They don't have to be seen or heard if they want to just check in. Tell them mine, tuneuptimelive.com. They can register for the Zooms. They can come here um, and... Uh, and stream the Facebook. You can check it out on podcasts. You can check it out on YouTube. Go to the mymechanic.net. Check out some of the offers there. You can go to takemia.com, download the Massive Imperfect Action audiobook. Uh, but I'm excited for some of you to start taking some actions that you've been thinking about taking. So you get different results uh, than you've previously been getting. So rock and roll. Here's to an awesome, incredible 2022 for each and every single one of you. And, um, what can I say? Be safe. Keep rocking. Keep rolling. As the great philosopher Matthew McConaughey would say, keep living. We'll see you all soon. We'll see you in 2022. Uh, like I said, be safe. Don't do anything crazy. We'll see you all here in 2022. So keep rocking. Keep rolling. We'll talk soon. Take care. Thanks so much.